Maria Welk was the first female to join the athletic department in 1946, joining Tumi, Hickey, and Wilson, among others, to coach tennis, swimming, equestrian, and many additional activities for rapidly expanding numbers of women students. I decided to go back to Berkeley, which I did. So then from there, you want to know I came to UCED. It was, wasn't difficult. And uh, Davis had been the Signal Corps school for the Army all through the war. But in 46, 1946, they uh, decided that they, the war was over, they'd start classes again. So they had a very small group. Then the regents decided, after much urging from Crip Toomey, the chairman of physical education and all the athletics, they would hire a woman. So I interviewed, and they said they'd have me, so I came. That was where I started. How many women were there on campus well, at that time, students question. and faculty, Maria? At well, that time? there were about 1,500 men. Now remember, the the GIs were all coming back. And the GI Bill was probably one of the greatest things that ever, ever happened to people. UCD had classes, was 46. I came in 47, there were 50, approximately 1,500 students, 80 women and 20 townies. Townies being women who lived at home at Dixon, Woodland, uh, Sacramento, or even with relatives or their own family in Davis. So it was a nice mixture. And you couldn't, and I, oh, the men, oh, the staff of men, there were five. Crip Toomey, a big football player from Berkeley, was the head of the whole department and intercollegiate athletic director and all. So then there was Fern Hickey, who was the football coach, and Woody Wilson, the track. The Will Woody Wilson relays is still being played on picnic day. Um, Myron Shaw, wonderful man, was who had been in the military, was the baseball coach. Uh, George Strombrand, graduate from Berkeley, was the basketball coach, yes, and also tennis. So when I arrived, those men were absolutely overjoyed because they had had to teach women. And the women, well, it was things like swimming, and uh, maybe a little tennis or badminton, and that, th that was it. So when I came, uh, classes were mixed with men and women. Our swimming classes all had men and women. Uh, even volleyball classes, women's basketball and men's basketball were not mixed. But most of the classes that we could, tennis was. So it was a, a wonderful situation from a community, friendly, uh, happy. It, it was easy, it was fun. And then, because I had had sports that I enjoyed, I started things like the equestrian club, and these were clubs. No classes, no credit, but equestrian was a natural at Davis, because many of the students had their own horses, right? Brought them with them, with their dog, and uh, most anything else that they, it was, it was a very good arrangement. We had rifle because I had had that and I got the military to teach it and use their rifle range. We had men and women in this club, uh, archery, uh, all these sports I had enjoyed. And I'll tell you a funny thing about the equestrian. I wrangled an invitation to the horse show that uh, the three Stanford Mills and Berkeley always had at Mills. Now they had it at Mills because there was a woman named uh, Cornelia Van something or other who was really a character and this was her stables and her horses and she ran Mills horse show with a tight control. So here was this little cow puncher bunch coming in from 
Davis, and she had such control that all the people, Stanford, Berkeley, Davis, Mills, drew for the horses that they were going to ride. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we had to draw. We wanted to ride our own horses. They didn't want any part of that. Well, we won first place. The team, the whole team, in, event, in team events and individual events. The second year, same thing happened. We won first. Third year, we weren't invited. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but that ended that. <laughs> so we... I'm going. I don't care what. I'm going on this. I'm going to... The Fulbright has been extended, and I'm going. So I went. I had a wonderful Fulbright, and that's how I got involved with the Olympics. Because um, this was the very beginning of the Austrian technique of veidling. And I came back with a hour full-length picture on the techniques of veidling by Professor Anton Krukenhoff, who was head of skiing at the Bundessportsheim in St. Anton out of the University of Innsbruck. And um, I lived with these ski instructors. It's a two-year course for Austrian ski instructors. And it's a pretty intensive course. This was the second year students that I was with and they were fantastic skiers were preparing for Olympics so with that and the Olympics coming up in Innsbruck the following year I met a number of people from the Olympic Committee and with this film that I had which I've donated to the Boreal Ski Museum you might be interested to know but uh, this was the basis for forming the American Professional Ski Technique, which we now employ by in all of our ski schools. All of the ski instructors all over use this same technique. It's a, almost a complete reversal from the old Arlberg technique. So that put me on a lot of Olympic committees, not only in uh, skiing, but in diving as well. All right, what do you see as the biggest difference between what you experienced with women's sports and what you see today. I know you're still very actively involved with our women's program and um, see a lot of things happening. What, what do you see as the biggest difference? Well, Title IX helped a lot from a money point of view. Um, I can tell you when we first started uh, competing, um, we could get a car to travel but we'd pack a lunch, um, we'd take pin money for a dinner or whatever, and I'd contribute a little bit as we went along. But uh, today, while it gives, I think you give voice to the fact that it's equal to the men's program, and it has come because of you a great deal, Pam. You're the one, especially at Davis, uh, that has brought the equality that I never saw. We were hampered by money and funds, but we also were hampered because other schools did not have women uh, able to compete. They, too, were not given funds. Our budget in the entire time that I was here, clear through, what was it, 87? I never, ever, though I asked and tried to find out, was ever able to get the budget that men's tennis or the men's swimming program or any of the men's programs were allowed. I could only find out what was given to the women. And this really hurt because you knew what was happening. And the men's tennis coach had moved my whole tennis team that was left off the courts because they were just women and he needed his men to practice. Well, that day I took the whole contingent, marched them down and asked the coach to bring all of his men together <laughs> and we discussed this <laughs> so that it didn't happen the next time I left with the team.
that was the foundation that you lay you laid for well for us for the future mari when you're very nice and so no but i know how those things go they change from year to year too and it's the people you have that are there yeah that was a great tribute i think to you mari in terms of the tennis uh program and i think that um it might be talking about tennis at this point to say how proud and pleased we are to be able to have the new tennis courts that are going to be built oh, in the future yeah. because of the kind contribution that you were make you made so that we can begin that process and to have that tennis complex named for you is one of the great joys that I've experienced in my career here oh. to have the Mario Welch Dr. Mario Welch Tennis Center be coming online hopefully within the next year um is certainly um going to be a tribute to you in per perpetuity um Yeah. And uh, I think it's significant of the contributions that you made in starting the program here and the efforts and the uh trauma that you had to go through at times in order to maintain this program. So um I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for that and to know that it's going to uh, be here in perpetuity for you. Or yeah, is the one thing that I'm more noted for and people have recognized and I appreciate it. Oh, a college the college is at Rue have been also honoring me and I have here a picture of the Mario Welch court which is at the College of LaRue on LaRue right across from Recreation Hall so it happens that they put my name on that first one the pink one because that's where I once had archery out on that range uh we had sort of a wild affair we had targets of different animals and uh, not just red white and blue circles but the worst was the grass was just nothing but well as like range land it had been left for years and years and years and we were stubbing our toes losing and breaking our arrows and it was just more than we could handle so we came back to outside hickey Jim to do our archery